cops raided a terrified Seattle woman's home. It was the wrong address. Seattle Police Department! Open the door! We're coming in! Seattle Police! I understand. I did not hear Seattle Police at all. I'm sorry about that. We thought that you were the victim and you were being held captive inside of this room. In November of 2020, 45-year-old Elizabeth Wren was preparing for a bath when five Seattle police officers busted down her door and streamed into her apartment. She barely had time to throw a coat over herself when she was stormed by the officers who shouted commands and pointed their guns at her. However, the officers had no reason to enter her apartment. According to a lawsuit that she filed last month, the police had gone to the wrong address. They weren't even in the correct building. Seattle Police Department! Open the door! We're coming in! According to the Seattle Times, the officers believed that they were responding to a crisis call about an intoxicated man who may have been attempting to push somebody out a window. While other first responders were able to reach the correct address, a second group of police officers ended up in a completely different apartment building where they mistakenly stormed Wren's apartment. Open the door now! Open the door! We're kicking the door! Yeah, police! Yeah, right, Show me your hands! Hello? Seattle Police Department! What the f inside? What the f Who else is inside? Who else is in here? Nobody! I live alone! What the f are you stopping? Come on here, man. Dude, According to reports filed by the officers named in the lawsuit, they entered the apartment without permission or a warrant because they believed the report of someone attempting to jump or push someone else out a fourth floor window, and that amounted to a life-threatening emergency. Since there were reports of someone attempting to jump out the window and or someone possibly being pushed out of the window, officers made exigent entry into the apartment believing that the subjects in the apartment were in danger and kicked the door open, wrote Wagner in his report. After entering, officers located a female inside but did not find a broken window or another person inside. Officers realized they had the wrong building. The civil rights attorney that she hired to file this lawsuit questioned the claim of exigent circumstances. He noted that once the officers arrived on the scene, they knew nobody had been pushed out of a window. The officers who entered the correct building contacted the man in the crisis who had a broken window wounding himself. The man and his wife were both taken to the hospital and no criminal charges were filed according to the police reports. Contacted you, we knocked down the CO police officers. 
<laughs> it sounded like you were the victim of the crime, and you sounded like you weren't able to close the door, and that's why we kicked it in. I didn't know who the f*** was at my door. I know, I'm sorry about that. I didn't hear that. you say Seattle, please. I didn't hear that at all. I heard, open the door, open the door, and I was like, who is this? And I did not hear okay, Seattle, okay, please. I'm at sorry. All. We got the to answer the door, okay? I understand. I did not hear Seattle, please. Well, I'm sorry about that. We thought that you were the victim and you were being held captive inside of this room. Right As now. they're trying to console this woman who is clearly very upset, she's trying to tell them that she did not hear them say Seattle police. And if we listen back to the body cam footage, you can hear the officer say it one time first, but at the point at which somebody would hear there's somebody at the door, all they're hearing is knocking and the officer demanding to come in without identifying himself. <laughs> Seattle Police Department, open the door. Contact. We're coming in. Open the door now. Open the door. We're kicking the door. This is a terrible way of doing it. He only says Seattle Police Department one time, and then he starts knocking and just demanding that the door be opened. And if you look at this door, you can see that there is not a people. So here, the officers have both the wrong address, and they're knocking on the door in such a way as to really not identify themselves as police officers. And that is really a perfect storm. Instead of a woman taking a bath inside, it could have been an innocent uh, homeowner who is in fear of his life and grabbed a firearm. Right now, there's someone else about to come out of a window, so they're gonna go do that. We're gonna have a supervisor coming over. We'll talk to you through that. I understand it's very, very jarring. I'm so sorry that this happened. Was there a constitutional violation there? Well, where are we? Inside a home. Inside the home, searches and seizures that take place by the police are presumptively unreasonable, which means that they are legal as the default rule under the Fourth Amendment. Whereas outside the home, Fourth Amendment protections only apply where there is a reasonable expectation of privacy, and thus no warrant is required outside the home unless there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. But searches or seizures inside a home require a warrant or a valid exception. The main exception is consent. The other really valid, the other valid exception that can be claimed is exigent circumstances, which is the issue here. That's what law enforcement were claiming to have used here to justify their entry. So what's the law? Law enforcement may enter a home without a warrant when they have an objectively reasonable basis for believing that an occupant therein is seriously injured or imminently threatened with injury. Again, this is known as exigent circumstances, and it generally refers to some emergency situation. The need to protect or preserve life or to avoid serious injury is justification for what would otherwise be illegal, absent an exigency or an emergency. That is an objective rule. The officer's subjective motivation is irrelevant. An action is reasonable under the Fourth Amendment regardless of the individual officer's state of mind, so long as the circumstances viewed objectively justify the action. Exigent circumstances can also apply to allow an entry under some other limited circumstances to prevent the imminent destruction of evidence. That's Minnesota versus Olson, 1990. Or if the officer is in hot pursuit of a fleeing suspect. That's United States versus Santana, 1976. However, also keep in mind that police cannot create their own exigent circumstances by engaging or threatening to engage in conduct that violates the Fourth Amendment. Their conduct must be reasonable. Were the officer's actions here reasonable, or was their mistaken belief here reasonable? I pulled the lawsuit, and there's not a whole lot of detail in it, and I don't have a copy of the police reports. So this may be one of those situations where the officers have to testify at their depositions, and we'll see what uh, their excuses are and before you can really determine whether or not those excuses are reasonable.
However, even without digging into that, just using the body cam footage alone, we can see that a reasonable police officer would have quickly realized, even if a reasonable mistake had been made as to the, the address, once they went inside, it was very clear that this was not the address that they were looking for. Yet they continued to search this place and they continued to basically um, detain this woman for an extended period of time. So perhaps even if the initial entry even was authorized via exigent circumstances, at some point that may have become unjustified based on what a reasonable officer would have objectively seen once they went into the apartment. Here there is compelling footage that you can see that, all right, this is clearly the wrong apartment. This woman has been traumatized and indeed they're trying to apologize to her and placate her. And going back to the original issue of the initial entry, we can look at the video I just did on the Joliet, Illinois wrong address uh, raid. And there, there's Supreme Court case law that says that the officer's mistake as to the address does not violate the Fourth Amendment where the officer's conduct was consistent with a reasonable effort to ascertain and identify the place intended to be searched within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment. That's Maryland versus Garrison, 1987. So were there any efforts here by the police officers to ascertain and identify the address of the place where they were going? So we'll have to wait and see what happens with the lawsuit. Um, one thing that it has going for it is the plaintiff. This is not somebody who had committed any crime, completely innocent and very clearly traumatized as per the body cam footage. And the body cam footage also shows that the cops were completely in the wrong. But this is one of those cases where the judge could stop the case from going to a jury on the grounds of qualified immunity. And that happens frequently in these types of cases. So. On the other hand, if I was a defense lawyer in this case, I would want to settle this case pretty quickly. And that is the fair thing to do here because this woman um, was minding her own business, taking a bath, and her life was turned upside down here. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Remember, my freedom does not end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it.